humanity learned the Earth's magnetosphere would collapse sometime in the next half century, eliminating all life on the planet. Decisive action was required, but the secure transport of an entire civilization would demand a new kind of cooperation, a new kind of courage, and a new kind of union. Thus, in 2159, the United Colonies were formed to make that journey possible. Just one year later, the Galileo, the first of many colony ships, touched down here on Jemison, beginning a new era of human history, the age of the United Colonies. The effort and planning it must have taken to evacuate literally the entire planet. Can you imagine? The logistics alone must have been mind-boggling. What? One of the displays broken? I'll call up your maintenance. From their foundation, the United Colonies strove to provide all their citizens with opportunity, security, and peace. But there were those among the UC that still wanted something more. Independence. So in 2161, the UC issued the Centaurus Proclamation, granting UC citizens the right to settle distant worlds and form their own sovereign powers. It wasn't long before the first new faction, the Free Star Collective, was formally organized in 2188 later followed by House Varun, revealing themselves to the universe in 2230. It was only in 2230 that the faction known as House Varun first made contact with the rest of the settled systems. Founded by the passengers of a colony ship that had left New Atlantis and disappeared four decades earlier, House Varun was a faction unlike any other. A theocracy dedicated wholly to the beliefs of its isolationist founder, Janan Varun. House Varun initially made overtures of peace towards the rest of the settled systems. They claimed their only intention was to spread the word of their god, the Great Serpent. But none could have guessed that this worship might take the form of a bloody war, the Serpent's Crusade. The Free Star Collective was initially founded in 2188, when the citizens of Aquila banded together with the pleasure city of Neon in mutual defense. But in 2194, after the deployment of a UC medical star station in orbit around their world, the citizens of Narion also requested to join the collective. The resulting rise in tensions between the Free Star Collective and UC culminated in the settled system's first intergalactic conflict the Narion War. Despite a decisive victory by the UC, the colonies permitted the citizens of Narion to join the Collective, forming the basis for the fiercely independent union that persists to this day. Beginning in 2240, 
House Varun forces declared all-out war on the rest of human civilization, initiating the Serpent's Crusade. For the next 23 years, thousands of Freestar, UC, and independent souls were killed by agents of House Varun in the name of their Serpent God. It was only with the death of their founder in 2263 and the succession of his heir, Jarek, that House Varun finally sued for peace. There remain, however, select members of House Varun who refuse to recognize the cessation of hostilities their leaders established. Even after House Varun's mysterious disappearance, these zealots remain a threat to all who encounter them. Their pacification? The goal of all space. Of the many conflicts between the galaxy's factions, none was more brutal than the recent colony war between the UC and the Freestar Collective. Set off by the unauthorized Freestar colonization of Vesta's Pride in 2308, a direct violation of the Narion Treaty, the colony war spread quickly across the galaxy. Both sides deployed every tool at their disposal. Armadas of warships, mechanized combat platforms, or mechs. Even bio-engineered alien creatures, the infamous UC Xeno weapons. It was only in 2311 at the Battle of Cheyenne that the scales finally tipped. The Free Star Collective, utilizing their civilian fleet as a human shield, successfully crippled the superior United Colonies Navy. After their shocking victory against the galaxy's greatest navy, the Free Star Collective offered terms of peace which the colonies, out of an interest in staving off any further human costs, accepted. The galaxy has been rebuilding ever since. The colony war was a horrible conflict that irreparably ruined its existence. There were times I felt that it would never end. This thing's like an artist's rendition, right? No animal can be this ugly in real life. In the midst of the colony war, a different kind of tragedy struck the UC city of Londinian. A newly constructed but critical supply center for the United Colonies war effort Londinian found itself overrun by one of the galaxy's most mysterious predators, the Terramorph. A rare but pervasive threat to all human settled worlds, Terramorphs swept over the city seemingly out of nowhere on a scale never before seen in recorded history. 
Valiant efforts by the UC military slowed the onslaught, but the creatures proved unstoppable. Ultimately, the decision was made to destroy the Londinian spaceport, sealing off the city, the outbreak, and its citizenry from the galaxy at large. The tragedy of Londinian is mourned by the UC to this day. Ever wonder how the Crimson Fleet seems to be everywhere? It's because they have little outposts everywhere. There were so many facilities abandoned after the Colony War, the pirates used them as forward operating bases, all over the settled systems. It was into this new world that the Vanguard was born. Branch of the UC Navy, the Vanguard is the United Colonies Volunteer Fleet, serving a myriad of security, logistical, and reconnaissance roles. And after a sufficient length of service, UC citizenship is guaranteed to every Vanguard member. Open to all captains, regardless of origin, the Vanguard is leading the charge to protect and support the citizens of the United Colonies, wherever in the galaxy they may be. bit of time in simulators just like these. They're startlingly realistic. Have fun. 
Ah, you must be our new applicant. I'm Proctor Samuelson. The simulator's already been prepped. You can head in whenever you're ready. All right then. <laughs>